Now we're going to look at essays and what is an essay and how is it put together. So we are looking at essay structure. So when we're looking at an essay, it's a very formal type of writing uh, that has certain requirements, uh, certain structures that it has. Uh, for example, it has a beginning, and it has a middle, and it has an end. Uh, the beginning is called the introduction. The middle part is called the body, and the ending part is called the conclusion. And so each of these pieces of the essay has a particular function uh, that is generally going to be expected. And this, by the way, an essay may seem like something very esoteric, uh, that you may feel like you're never, ever going to write another essay again in your life once you're done taking your English composition classes. Uh, but the truth is, if you learn these elements of the essay, they can translate into other types of writing that you're doing. For example, if you're writing a business letter, say you're applying for a job, knowing these structural components and how they work with uh, the reader, uh, you may not be writing an essay as your job application letter, but knowing how to work an introduction and a body and a conclusion in such a way that the reader is satisfied is going to be a useful skill. So, what we're going to start with is looking at the introduction. The introduction, as its name implies, introduces the essay. Uh, it's what's going to get the reader into it. So, one of the key things you really want to do in the introduction, you want to grab the reader's attention. You want to do something that the reader looks at it and says, I want to read this. I'm interested in this. And there are a lot of techniques out there that you can use to try to get the reader's attention. Uh, for example, you may start with an impressive or surprising fact, uh, such as uh, there are nearly 30,000 students at CNM, which makes it the largest post-secondary institution in the state. That's a fact a lot of people may not know. It's something that gets the reader interested in what you have to say. Or you may start by telling a story, uh, what's known as an anecdote. Anecdote means you tell about something either that happened to you or that happened to somebody you know, uh, things like that. Or maybe you give a bit of background a bit th about the issue. Uh, for example, if you're talking about uh, driver's licenses for immigrants in New Mexico, you may have a reader who's not familiar with what's going on here in New Mexico, uh, so you may want to explain a little bit about the background. So um, when you're getting the reader's attention, uh, you're going to be doing things like showing why the topic is important. Uh, why should the reader be interested in this? Uh, sometimes it may be something uh, of earth-shaking importance. Uh, sometimes it may be just something that's fun or amusing. But show something that's important to the reader. The reader is going to be asking the question, why should I care? You want to show the reader why the reader should care about this topic. Uh, as I mentioned, you may want to be giving some background. about your topic, uh, filling the reader in, what's been going on in this uh, type, you know, in this issue, um, so the reader is not left totally in the dark. Um, another thing that you will typically see in an introduction is some kind of a preview of the essay. But watch out. You don't want to give the preview in the form of in this essay, I am going to discuss. Those are wasted words. 
the reader already knows it's an essay, so you don't need to tell the reader it's an essay. And the reader already knows you're going to discuss something, so you don't need to tell the reader you're going to discuss something. Instead, just give a quick summary of what are some of the main points that the reader might expect to see in the essay. And by the way, sometimes you may not even really know where the essay is going uh, when you write the introduction, and that's fine. Some people will write the introduction first because the introduction then gives them a road map that'll help them to follow the rest of the essay. But if you're not even really sure where you're going, well, this is where computers come in really handy because you can go and write the rest of the essay. And then once you know where the rest of the essay is going, you can come back and write the introduction to fit it. Uh, an example I use is the uh, author Tony Hillerman. Uh, you may or may not have heard of him. He was from New Mexico, well, originally from Oklahoma, but lived in New Mexico most of his life. Wrote mystery novels set on the Navajo Nation. And uh, one of the things he would do when he wrote a book, he would write chapter one, then he would go and write the entire rest of the book, and then he'd come back and just totally trash the first chapter one that he wrote and write a new chapter one that matched with where the novel actually ended up going. So if you're that type of writer, you're not alone. Uh, you're like Tony Hillerman. Uh, write the rest of the essay first so you know where you're going, and then come back and write the introduction. Although, as I said, it's also not wrong to write the introduction first. Uh, if you feel the introduction gives you a good plan or roadmap for the essay, that's good too. Whatever works for you. Now, another thing that you'll typically see in the introduction is that you will set up the thesis, which is to say the main point of the essay. Now, you will notice I just say set up the thesis. Most essays, you probably do state a thesis at the beginning of the essay. Um, however, you don't have to do it that way. Uh, you will need to do something to get the reader thinking about where we're going with this, what's happening. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to state a thesis at this point. Or you may state a thesis that's very broad and general. Um, just by the end of the essay, you'll get to something more specific. Or you may start by asking a question at this point, and by the time you get to the end of the essay, you have an answer to that question, and that answer is your thesis. So the thesis is not something that's just static and dead and just sits there. Uh, so at the beginning of the essay, um, another reason you might not want to state your thesis right at the beginning, if you're dealing with a really controversial issue, and you know that about half the people in the world are going to disagree with you, you might kind of back into the thesis and just sort of give a little hint about it here. Just be sure that by the time you get to the end of the essay, you do have a good point, that you have proved a good point here. So these are things that you'll typically see in an introduction.